Welcome back to the Jatai Academy. I'm Russell Mays, Director of Content, and today we're going to be doing some celebrity hair. So let's get started. Today we're going to be doing the Zac Efron haircut, and it's very applicable to the salon use, and it's very um, salon friendly. It covers a lot of different types of textures, a lot of different types of thicknesses as well. And so as we go through and we start to look at his haircut, we notice that it's a very square type of shape. So it's shorter on the sides and the back, and when it goes up, it, it has a very squared off corner on the sides, and it will usually have a little bit more length right in the front. That's probably to deal with the real strong cowlick that he has right around the front of his hairline. And as we start to look at it, I mean, sometimes it's really, you know, short and tight, and then other times it's a little bit longer and we see here it's a little bit more combed back, but it's the same basic type of shape. So we're gonna work on cutting a square shape with a little longer here in the front, and we're gonna use this length as our guide and take everything kind of tight down through there. So let's get started. Okay, now to get started, the, the main thing I wanna focus on is building this square shape. So I've sectioned off the center of the recession straight back to the quarter part from the quarter part down to just above the occipital bone on both sides. So that separates the top half of the head from the bottom half of the head. Now the reason that I take this angle and go back to a point lower than on the sides is if I take this all the way around and horseshoe it and don't compensate for the head curvature, is I cut everything short in the back, it makes them look like they have a flat head. And I wanna maintain that natural head shape and curvature. So I'm gonna start on the sides and the angle that I'm gonna take, the section I'm gonna take is gonna be parallel to whatever this angle is on the front hairline. I'll lay my finger right at the front of the hairline, comb this into my front finger, determine at what length that I want. Most of the pictures of Zach, it's a little bit tapered. It's, well, it's not a little bit, it's, it's, it's extremely tapered. So it's shorter around the ear and it gradually gets longer as it goes up. So I'm gonna plant my knuckles at the ear and then bring my fingers out a little bit and then go through and cut that angle through. I'm gonna comb that and I'm gonna start checking and see if this length here is short enough. I can take this shorter down here over the ear, but I'm looking at that length there and how it falls. Now, at this point, I'm making the determination, do I want the longer version where it can kind of comb, or do I want the shorter version? If I want the shorter version, I might as well just clip or over comb everything off. There's no need to go through and cut everything with the scissor and then go back and scissor over comb everything off. Why, why cut it twice, just cut it once? I'm gonna leave it a little longer and I'm gonna taper it in a little tighter over the ear once I get near being finished. So let's take that a little shorter comb to the front of the hairline, find your angle, down and through. So my next section is gonna be parallel and about the same size as the first section. So I have section one and I have section two. Now I'm gonna pick up both sections and cut these into the center of both sections. There's my line, cut that through, come on. Now I've cut section one and section two. I will move on, section three, same angle, same size of section. I will now remove section one, take section two and section three, comb them into the center of both sections, there's my line. Cut that down and through. Now I've cut section one, two, and three. And I'm just gonna continue to walk that section all the way back until I get to the center back of the head. Now the fourth section, I'm gonna go all the way down to the nape. I'll remove section two Section three and section four, I will comb to the center of both of those sections. There's my guide. 
follow that through. Now I no longer have a guide underneath, I only have the guide on top. All the way down and through. Next section parallel. This is section five. I will remove section three. Now I have section four and five to the center of both of those sections. There's my guide underneath. Now I remove the next section here, which is section six. Try to keep everything as symmetrical and consistent as possible. Five and six to the center of both of those sections. There's my guide underneath. Comb that through. And I just continue to work the pattern until I hit the dead center of the back of the head. The important thing is that as I'm walking the section, I want to make it as repeatable as possible. So I'm only working with two sections at a time. The last section through here. There's my line. Cut that down and through. Now what I'll do is I'm going to go through and cross check it. As I cross check it, if I cut it at this angle, I'm going to cross check it horizontally. So I cut it vertically, check it horizontally, and as I check it, I will nibble off anything that isn't quite perfect. Now if I see big gaps of, of section and my line is really inconsistent and wavy, then I was inconsistent with my sections. But as long as I'm consistent with my sections, there should be very little hair that I have to clean up. Most of the time, you'll get a little bit of cleanup in the transition from the flat here as the head starts to curve. And that's normal. Don't freak out. Don't worry about it. You can clean it up. Cross check all the way through. Same thing here in the center. Very little hair. Oh, come on. Very little hair to check there. And that's actually not bad. I feel pretty good about that. I will go through and taper this in a little bit tighter after I finish cutting the other side. Now, we have finished using our scissors, and I was using the uh, Jatai Osaka scissors. I was using the five and a half inch because I feel like it's easier for me to get good control over the ear when I'm transitioning into the nape. It's um, a little short for doing scissor over comb. And since I just want to taper in just this bottom part here, I'm just going to use the clippers. I finished the scissor part of the underneath and I was using the Jatai Osaka scissor, the five and a half inch. And I feel like the five and a half inch is easy for me to transition from the side into the, the nape area. Being a shorter scissor is easier for me. So being that it's short, I get more control and it forces me to deal with smaller sections. But trying to taper this in through here doing scissor over comb, I'll just end up overworking myself. So I'm going to switch now to the clipper. Now with the clipper, all I want to do is the same philosophy as doing scissor over comb. Oh, come here. Same philosophy as scissor over comb. I'm going to start low, put the comb in right at the nape, right at the hairline, angle the, the comb at the angle that I want my tapering to be, and come up and out. 
the more strokes and passes that I have with the clipper, the smoother that the section will be. I wanna be mindful to only really bevel in this edge. I'm not trying to cut everything off through here. I don't wanna recut the whole thing. So let's see if we can do that. looking pretty good. I think that that's uh, on to the next step. So what I want to do here with the Tokyo thinning scissor is I'm going to put the straight blade underneath and I'm just going to scissor over comb and all I want to do is trace what's already there. All I want to do is trace what's already there. I'm not trying to recut it. I just want to trace it to soften everything up. So I'll go through and just on the very tips, hit it with this thinning scissor. If I run across a piece of hair or a section of hair that I feel is a little bit thick, and by thick I mean that it's gonna look darker and more solid than the hair surrounding it. So for instance, that little piece right there looks a little thick to me. I will go deeper than just the edges. So if I want to thin it out, I'll go deeper. If I just want to blend, I'm just hitting the very tips of the hair. Here, I feel it's a little thicker around the front, so I go a little bit deeper because these mannequin heads always tend to have more hair around the front. So as I go through and do that, I'll look at everything, make sure everything looks fairly even. I got a little more there I'll take out. That looks good, a little bit right there. And that feels good. Same thing on the other side. So now that we've finished the sides, we're gonna go ahead and start cutting the top. Now I actually already started to cut the top, but the camera didn't record. So I'm gonna walk you through it again. All right, so we're gonna take the center section from the front hairline all the way to the center of the nape. So I'm taking a mohawk section all the way through and down. Now from here, I'm gonna take and hold this straight up off the head 90 degrees, and I'm gonna work longer to shorter in the nape to where it blends to our length that we already cut in the back. So I'll take a section right here around the front, I'll hold that straight up in the air, I'll cut my length through, remove a small piece as my guide for the next piece, hold that straight up in the air, cut that all the way through, small piece as my guide, the next section, hold that up, point cut that all the way through, the next section, hold up, cut that all the way through, and as I get back into the, the crown, going into the nape, that should start to blend with the length that I left off when I cut my underneath. So I'm going from shorter, gradually building up length to longer on top. So after I finish that section, I will go through and take a parallel section on one side, straight all the way back, exactly like we did the first section. So now instead of the first section being the side of the, of the comb, now it's two widths of the comb, and I'm gonna comb these two into the center. So not the center of the head, the center of those two sections. Now I'm gonna combine these two sections into one and cut into the center of that section. 
So I'm going to hold it up straight into the center. Take a small piece as my guide. The next section going back, hold that up. Cut that through, a small piece as my guide. The next section, cut that through, a small piece as my guide. And I'm going to continue to do this until I match the hair in the back. So now that I've got both of those two sections done, I will go through and remove the very first section that I cut. I'm going to comb that out of the way. So now I have my second section and I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of this hair. So we'll combine those two. So now I have the second and third section and I'm going to comb these into the middle of both of those sections straight up towards the ceiling. Use the center as my guide, the previously cut section as my guide and cut that down and through. So I'm going to pull this up. Come on, come on, there we go. There's my guide. Cut that through, remove that. Take section two and three, straight off of the head. Comb that out of the way. The next section, straight off of the head. The next section, it should blend in the nape. Make sure everything blends. Get that other hair out of the way. There we go. We got that through. Check my line as I work back towards the front to make sure everything is looking good. Looking good. So now I've cut the entire right side of the head. And as I check, it should be straight across. And it is straight across. If I end up over directing too much, it will build up an angle going longer towards the ear. If I under direct and bring it over as opposed to straight up towards the ceiling, I'll start to round my shape out. So the key to this haircut is I'm building up a square shape. So I want to make sure that I'm building up this corner on the sides. And we're looking pretty good. So now to cut the other side, I'll go back into the center. The very first section that I cut, I will retake that. Pin this hair out of the way. Now on the left side, I will take a parallel section to what I cut the first time. Combine these two and do exactly the same thing that I did on the other side. Okay, now, so now that we've cut the sides and we've cut the top, we need to blend and make sure that they both seamlessly flow together. It will flow together in the back because I, I went and used that as my guide. So I went from longer, gradually getting shorter as I go to the nape. But right here, you'll notice that we have some overhang. I don't want that much overhang. So I'm gonna go through and take a parallel section to the section that I very first took, which was the center of the recession to the quarter part to the drop crown. So I'm going to take a parallel section to that. From here, I want to make sure that I'm blending the sides, but I don't necessarily need all of this to blend. I might leave that kind of overhanging. So I might undercut a little bit there, but I still want it to blend and fit the head. So what I'll do is where the quarter part is, that will blend. From the quarter part forward, I will start to angle my fingers longer towards the front. So I leave this hair in the front, but I can still keep this nice and tight through the sides. But it will still blend at the quarter part back. So I'll pull this over towards the side. Lifting up anything that hangs out from underneath. I'll make sure that that blends through. There's my guide underneath. Pulling that through. I want to make sure that I'm pulling it out 
of the head. I don't want to pull it down. I want to make sure I'm pulling it straight out of the head. So now as I start to move towards the front and I pull this straight out, I'll angle my fingers forward and start to undercut just in the front. And I don't know how much, so I'll start and leave myself a little bit more length than I think that I need and then check it out. I think I can take a little bit more. So I'll take a little bit more and cut that through. I'll take a parallel section. Same thing. Hold that out. Anything that hangs over, I'm going to cut and make sure that it blends with the hair underneath. As I get to the quarter part right here behind the ear, I angle my fingers away from the head, ensuring that I have length around the front. So when this pops up, I still have my nice square shape. There shouldn't be anything that really blends after a couple of sections. And I got a little bit right there. We got that. Looking pretty good. Now the same thing on the other side. My basic shape is already in it. So I've got everything like I want. I got the sides shorter. I got the back shorter. I could probably taper it in a little bit more. I could leave it a little bit longer because he wears it both ways where it's longer and combed back and then he wears it where it's really clippered and tight. So it, it's up to you, whatever your client wants. But I want to make sure that I'm maintaining this square kind of shape with a little bit more length in the front and then slowly coming into a nice pleasing head shape in the back. Now I like everything that we've got. I just feel that this top hair is a little bit too thick and it needs a little bit more oomph to it and a little bit more pizzazz. So I'm going to go through with my Tokyo thinning scissors and I'm going to point cut a little bit deeper to remove some of the solidity of this section and give it a little bit more flow and a little bit more moldability. So let's do that. So I'm gonna use some blade glide to help wet the hair, make it a little bit easier to comb, help the scissor cut a little bit better. So to take some of this weight out, I'm just gonna take the section, put the cutting blade underneath, and then go through like this and just remove some of that weight from the ends. And I'll do that section by section for the entirety of the top. Yeah, that helped a lot. That helped a lot. So we've got our basic shape in. We got everything pretty good. I'm gonna go through and put some texture spray in it to give it some resiliency. And then we're gonna blow it dry and see how it looks. So we got a nice end result here. It's, uh, I feel like it looks a lot like the picture we had with the, with the longer shape that he was going for. Uh, really square kind of shape, tapered in, nice head shape in the back, square on the sides, a little bit apart like he had when it was really long. And uh, the texture is right, so I, I'm, I feel pretty good about that. The only thing about this type of haircut you have to pay attention to is your traveling guide. You have to be really, really consistent with not only the section sizes, but where you're holding it. And as that guide travels, everything has to remain in the center. Not only did we do a traveling guide on the sides, we also did it on the top. So just practice, practice, practice makes perfect, and you'll be able to get it as well. Uh, it's a foundational skill that you really need to learn. So check out the Jatai Academy. There's all kinds of stuff on there to add to your haircutting repertoire. Please let me know what you'd like to see in the future and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.